Hey guys. I guess you can hear Lily in the background. That dog gets on my last nerve. I don't know if she's going to stop because she hears me talking. I put the TV on in the other room. Uh, the bird's on it, and it's tweeting and all that kind of stuff, so she would be drawn to that. I know. She hears my voice, so she wants to be in there and just she make me mad. Y'all, I'm going to have to get her and put her in. in the, can y'all hold on a minute? Just don't go nowhere. I just said, no, because I'm not going to be able to talk. I'm sorry. I should have thought of this beforehand, but I got something important to tell you. Give me about a minute, maybe 30 seconds. I'm going to rush her in there. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. You are getting on my last nerve. No. No. out of breath. I was trying to hurry as fast as I could. I'm so sorry. Y'all probably can still hear in the background. Listen. No, you probably just hear the birds now. There she goes. Well, anyway, guys, who let me know who's who's on tonight. You know me. I like to kind of know where you're watching from. And uh, I can never remember I do good to know what town I'm living in, but uh, I haven't been on in a while. Hey, Willa, Willa, love, love my Willa, and Regina. Hey, Regina, I know you where you from, Regina. Yeah, thank you though. It might not be that many on tonight, but that's okay. If it's just one, y'all are very important to me. And I haven't been on in a while. And I know some have have written me and go, Sheila, it seems like there's always something going on, don't it? Like in January, I was going to start the new year with all these videos and stuff in January. Uh, Mr. brought some crud in from who knows where he got it from and brought it into me. And then I got sick, and I was sick about three weeks. Then February the 2nd, my little possum went to heaven. And, uh, man, that was a hard one. Still is. And so what else? Something else happened. It's like boom, 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 boom. And anyway, it's not that I haven't want, wanted to be on. It's due that, as you can see, I'm solo. Your mister's, mister's not here. And I've got my title is For Better or Worse. You know, we say those things in our vows that no matter what happens, that is for, you know, your marriage is for better or for worse. No matter what may come, that you love each other and you stick together and go through whatever it is. Well, I'm going to try to get through this without boo-booing, guys. We got this little yappy dog, and that was against. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it, little Lily Mae. And you hear back there? Well, when she gets going, she don't shut up. So after possum, I said, I, won't, I don't want another critter. Never want another critter. And because uh, I was still grieving over possum. I still am to this day grieving over my little possum. 
And so then it was on Marketplace about this lady was giving these dogs away. They were Labradoodles. So I said, I was telling Mr. Anyway, long story short, we went to go look at them. And there was like four or five of them. I can't remember. It might have been five. I can't remember. But um, she was the runt. And so Mr. really, you know, he wanted her. So, and then, you know, they got them little eyes looking at you like, please get me, please get me. Well, please get me back yonder yapping. Oh, she is the most hard headed critter. I mean, ever hard headed. And I shouldn't be speaking that into existence, should I? But she is. And, I mean, if she's not into one thing, she's into another. But she's a puppy. But just the timing is what I'm getting to, the timing. Well, we brought her home. Mr. just fell in love with her. And he's down on the floor, and he's playing with a little tug of war and roughhousing her and stuff like that. And, you know, how you do dogs. And so, anyway, I ended up being sleeping on the sofa. And the reason I'm sleeping on the sofa because we have a, I guess it's a dog pen, like a play pen. And so at night I would put her in there with a pee mat and toys and blanket and things like that. Well, she wants to be right with you. So she had to see me. So that's why I ended up staying on the sofa. Plus when she's got to go poop, guess who lets her out at night? Me. Plus Sammy. And I wanted Mr. You know, to go ahead and get his sleep. And then the next day I let, you know, while I'm doing other stuff, I let him take over and letting the critters out, and especially her. She has to pee every, every few minutes. I bet every, every 10 minutes she's got to pee. Whew, that's another thing. That's just another thing. Y'all hear her? Y'all hear her? Give me a thumbs up. Can y'all hear her? She gets on my nerves. Well, anyway, I had gotten up several times. I'm going to get to the point. I'd gotten up several times to let uh, Lily out and Sammy out. And I was beat. After several nights of that, you know, when you're just lacking in sleep, uh, you're wore out. So, anyway, Mr. got up and... He got him a cup of coffee, and he drank a cup of coffee, and um, he let Lily out. He takes her outside and lets her walk and run and get all that energy out of her. And uh, then he came back in, and normally when she runs and she gets has a lot of energy like that, what she'll do is then she'll come and kind of collapse at your feet. She likes just to lay right beside you. Then she puts her little head on your foot. Then you feel like you can't move. You know, you know what it's like. like if y'all got critters, if you've got a cat in the bed or a little pup in the bed, and you got to turn over, you know how when you're laying there, you pick your feet way up over here and go around that critter so not to disturb them. You know what I'm talking about. I know y'all done it. I just do it possible all the time because I didn't want to disturb them. Well, anyway. Lily was laying at Mr.'s feet. And so he was going to go get him. I thought he was going to go get him some um, breakfast because he has to eat in the morning because he's diabetic. So he has to eat. And I don't like claiming that either. But anyway, um, so I told him and I was on the phone with my son and we were yapping about something that happened that morning or something. I mean, it was it was pretty early. I want to say it's about. Yeah, I think a minute. Well, it went, went pretty early. It was about 8.30. Anyway, Mr. was going to go up and get him another cup of coffee, which I thought he was going to get something to eat. But then I found out later, actually, he was going to go get him his second cup of coffee because usually he drinks two cups of coffee and I only drink one. So I said to him, well, I'm not, I said, Mr. I was looking over this way. I said, Mr., be careful when you get up. I said, Lily's right there at your feet. He said, oh, I will. I said, okay. So when he gets it, he's looking. And so, you know, it's kind of like when you're in bed. You got to move yourself around, you know, so you don't disturb Lily because she's a handful. It's like, please, 
please. It's like when you got a baby and you, when it finally goes to sleep, you like everybody like, Shh, don't make much racket because you know you try to you try to do what you got to do. You don't want to wake that baby up. So it's like her because when you it's like the Tasmanian devil. You wake her up, she's all over the place, wanting to chew everything, bite you, and do I mean she's just she's a handful. I don't know why I got that dog. Anyway. So he says, I will. Well, he stood up in his clumsy like way, trying to get around her. And you know, I'm on the phone, like I said, with my son. And he's kind of standing there. And I go, he kind of like he didn't have his balance, you know, trying to get around her. I said, Mr., are you okay? He goes, yeah, well, we have a cedar chest I use as a coffee table that's in front of the sofa. It's a little ways out, but it's in front of the sofa. And I noticed he put his hands down on the cedar chest and he was just raising his leg and not, you know, beating his foot on the floor. And, and I, I said, mister, are you all right? He goes, yeah, my foot's going to sleep. I said, oh, and then I'm going to make a joke about it. You know, have you ever had your foot go to sleep, your leg go to sleep, your arm go to sleep, and then when that feeling comes back in, it's like, ah, oh, chihuahua. I mean, it's like, oh, it hurts when that feeling comes back in. So I made this little joke. I said, boy, it's going to hurt that feeling starts coming back in, buddy. And so he's still shaking and everything. Well, then he turns around. He's headed towards the kitchen. Now, I can see in the kitchen because, you know, we live in this little itty-bitty double-wide mobile home here in the hills of Virginia. Oh, I forgot to tell you, both y'all, it's the first time y'all people uh, tuning in. What's up, y'all? I'm Sheila. What's up, y'all? And we're, mi we're missing Mr. Okay. I just want to throw that in there because I forgot. Let me see. Y'all been writing me? Hey, Rita. And... Kara, Kara, I'm late, but you're fine. You're fine. And if you missed anything, you can just go back and watch it. Anyhow, let me get to the story. So Mr. is like now headed towards the kitchen. Have y'all ever seen, how many, give me a thumbs up. I see, I ain't got many thumbs up right yet, but. Give me a thumbs up so I'll know. Or just say, yeah, I've, I've said, have y'all ever watched Carol Burnett's show? Or am I the only old one on here that knows who Carol Burnett is? Any of y'all know who Carol Burnett is? Yeah, Regina, thank you. Anybody else? Is it just me and you, Regina? I'm looking over here to see. Anybody else know who Carol Burnett is? Comedian? Well, I guess it's just me and you, Regina. I just thumbs up. Oh, thank you, Kara. Look, I, I'm tell you what, she was so funny. I like when she played mama. Of course, Barbara says. Thank y'all. Okay. Well, then you know what I'm going to talk when I say this, then you can visualize it. So, Mr.'s going ahead for the kitchen. So, as he's heading for the kitchen, remember, his leg is asleep. Remember? And so... He's walking like Tim Conway does on Carol Burnett when he acts like that old man. He's going, just, just a shuffling. You know, it is just a shuffling. So I'm kind of watching him. I'm thinking he's being very careful because his leg's asleep. And he can't feel it, so he's having to do the shuffle so he can get into the kitchen and hopefully the feeling to come back in his leg. Right? Y'all with me? She, uh, she'll be like, hey. Carrie Harvick said, hey, y'all. Well, I remember her. How y'all doing? How you doing? Well, anyway. So he's in there, and I'm still on the phone with Joe. I'm going, yeah, well, uh, yeah, talking about what, so what happened now? What? No way. Yeah, way. I go, oh, my goodness. So then I just happened to look over in the kitchen again. Well, mister's got his rear end up against the counter, just standing there. And when I looked at him, folk, you know, you know your spouse, right? Which y'all supposed to. You know your spouse. And I looked at him, and it was just different. And 
know. It was just different. And I'm looking at him, because I was looking that way. It was the kitchen where I was sitting in yonder. And I'm looking at him, I go, you remember I had asked him two or three times, or maybe two times, Mr. You all right? Yeah, you know, uh, my leg's going to sleep. And um, blah, blah, blah. So, so this time when I looked at him, it was something different. And, and I don't saw the phone. I said, Mr., you all right? He says, get off the phone. That's my son's name, Joe. I said, Joe, I got to go. And I hung up like that, and I went running over there. I said, mister, what's wrong? He said, I can't move my leg. I wasn't going to boo-hoo, y'all. He said, I can't move my leg. My leg feels like it's in cement. And he says, and I, I can barely move my arm. Well, then when I looked up at him, his left side of his mouth was drawing. And I knew what it was. I said, mister, you're having a stroke. And I said, I got to call 911. And he said, he said, yeah. I said, I got to sit you down. And the dining room chair was close. I couldn't try to walk. He can't move his leg. And I did, my phone was over there on the sofa and and I knew I needed to get over to it, but I was afraid if I left him that with this not feeling and stuff, it was all on his left side that maybe he'd fall to the floor and then we got even something even bigger going on there. So I got the dining room chair and I tried to help him and it was all I could do because Mr.'s a big man, guys. And I got him in the chair and I dialed 911. And it wasn't long before they were here. And they were taking his vitals and stuff. And they were asking him, did you fall recently? I mean, all these questions. And, oh, and by the way, after I called 911, I turned around and I called my son. And it was real quick. I said, get over here quick. That was all it was. Get over here quick. And I hung up with him. Well, the EMS people were here in no time. I mean, lickety split. Like I said, when they got here, they were hooking up EKG. They were blood pressure, asking them all these questions. His name, do you know your name, your date of birth, and all this stuff. They were asking them. And he was answering them. So they said, well, we got to take you to the hospital. Remember, we live in a little city. And... um we got to take you to the hospital, sir. And so they loaded him up on in the ambulance, and my nerves were shot. I mean, just shot. I couldn't think. I couldn't function. All I could think about was my mister. And he said, Hold up, I'm trying to. I said, Joe, you gotta drive me. You gotta drive me to the hospital because I can't drive right now. I'd probably run over a, off a mountain somewhere. So my son drove me and I got we got there and they had him back in the ER. And it wasn't very long. Somebody, see, I'm goofy then because my I mean I can't think. They came out, some guy, might have been a nurse, I don't know, came out and got me. And uh, he said, are you with Mr. Watts? I said, yes, I am. So you come on back. So I went on back. And he was laying there. And, of course, they still had him all plugged up. And me, it's like several people around him. It was just busyness, you know, just busyness. And I'm looking at him. And, um.
They said, Ms. Watts said, your husband's had a stroke. Well, I mean, I knew that because, you know, what was going on here in the house. And, uh, and we're going to have to take him by ambulance to the big city. Um, and uh, I said, well, you know, because the, 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 even here, the hospital, they, you know, they take stroke victims. And so I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. Well, they were going to give him this. It's called a, I don't know, maybe the medical term, but they said it's a clot buster. So they were telling him that they were going to give him this clot buster that is supposed to go in there like it sounds, a clot buster, bust up the clot. And that saved many people's lives. I mean, it was kind of like a miracle thing, you know, they've come out with that. And so they gave it to him. And something about having to raise, it was something about his blood pressure or something. And to push this medicine up to, I don't know how it did. I, all I know is they said this has got to go up to, to his um, to his brain. Oh, before that, see, here I am. They took him back and did a CT scan. They came back and said, he's got a clot uh, on the right side of his brain. And what I'm understanding, y'all probably know about this, that if something happens to your left side, which it did with him, it happened, the stroke, uh, the clot would be on your right side and vice versa. So that's when they said, we're going to give you this clot buster. So they gave him uh, the clot buster. And, uh, well, they said it's like it's a 2% chance something goofy can happen. Well, like I said, I can't tell you all this because I ain't in my right mind. I'm looking at my mister laying there. He's the love of my life. And he's laying there. And I feel helpless. And while they're doing that, um, the doctor calls me out into the hall. And he says, Miss Watts, he says, we're going to have to airlift your husband. I said, I thought y'all were taking him in the ambulance. Miss Watts, we were. But your, your husband's having a heart attack now. I lost it. I totally lost it. This happened on March the 7th. So they took him. Like he said, because we just don't have the equipment here. Because not only the stroke that we're dealing with, but now he's having a heart attack. And they have the equipment there, the bigger facility to take care of the stuff. So I had to drive now. So my son uh, watches the helicopter. I think I've got a picture of it, them taking him, put him in the helicopter. They take him to the big city. And they told me where they were going to take him. So I knew that I had to drive then. I don't know, something with my son. I can't, oh, he had to take care of the critters and stuff. And I said, I should be able to drive now. Joe, and he said, you sure you're going to be all right? I said, you know, it's like you, you have to, you know, you, you have to. And so I got there, and then they did another, I think they did an MRI, and I think it may be another CAT scan. I, you know, like I said, heck, I ain't in my right mind. And They had to, one of his arteries in his heart was 100% blocked. So they had to put a stent in it. So this is where it gets tricky. They're saying that, that they have to, it's something about his blood pressure. They need enough blood stuff to go up to the brain, the pressure, 
to help dissolve that clock. Remember the clock buster thing. But then they can't because now they got to keep it low, the blood pressure low, because they don't want to raise the blood pressure because it could blow out the stent. So it was a dang if you do and dang if you don't. And, I mean, he was just, he said, so between the neurologist and the cardiologist and all that, them, and um, he should have been maybe further along with the clot thing, but they can't because they can't raise the blood pressure because it'll blow out the stent. And so, anyway, he was, uh, he was in the, uh, in the hospital uh, for a week. Because then we're now we're trying to find a um, a rehab to send them to. Well, really, okay, well, let me back up. So they want to go, oh, oh, and oh, I forgot this. He has AFib on top of that. So they want to go in there and shock his heart to get it in the rhythm, you know. And so before they do could do that, they had to take him back to uh, – operating room I guess and they sent that little thing up his arm into his heart because <clears throat> they wanted to see if there was any other clots which I should have done that in the first place but if there's any other clots there um, before he left and they put him on all this blood thinner well when they got in there it wasn't a clot, but it was this gushy stuff, they said. They named it. I don't know what it is. Some gushy stuff. So they said, well, the blood thinner, that more than likely that what it's going to do is that it'll just thin that on out. Okay? Well, here we go. So now we're trying to wait to get into the rehab so we can work on Mr. Because Mr. can't move any of his left side. Not at all. And he couldn't hardly speak. His speech just. Lord, but I'm going to tell you what really got me. When he was uh, in the little city at the hospital, he said, he said, baby, come here. Baby, come here as best they could. Bless his heart. And I went over there. He says, I want, I want to be alone right now with you. And the nurse was standing there and said, can, can you give us just a few seconds? I didn't know what was going on in his mind, you know. When I got up in his face, I said, sorry, guys, I'm so sorry. I said, what is it, mister? He said, baby, I want you to pray for me. I said, I'll pray, I'll pray. He says, I want you to lead me through the Lord's prayer again. He wanted to make sure that if something should happen to him, he's kind of like made sure all his T's were crossed and his, and his eyes were dotted in case he didn't make it. That, you know, the forgiveness of all of his sins and, you know, kind of, Resaying that, you know, he gave himself to the Lord and all that stuff. Well, I did. Because that's when, that's when they were air flighting him to the big city. I lost it. Yeah. So they got him over to rehab. And uh, there's a lot of things that's going on there. It's just really upset me. They had him on muscle relaxers. Well, they got to start rehab. Oh, oh, and oh. So then the cardiologist says, well, we, you know, we like, we can't do the, Shakaru, but we like for him to come back in two weeks. Two weeks? How's he gonna get there? Are you kidding me? It's like, what's the matter with these people? You know, what's the matter with them? I mean, is it all this? We're talking about he can't move. He can't, I can't move him. 
how am I supposed to get them back to back to uh, to the hospital or back to wherever and, and go back in there to see if that thing's cleared up or not? Really? Anyway, they put him on all these muscle relaxers because he's having some spasms. He can't sleep at night. That was the one thing. So they gave him some so he could sleep. This was in the hospital before we left. While we were waiting, we had to wait three days in the hospital. Three days because our insurance had to approve him going to rehab. So meanwhile, he's just sitting there or laying there. I mean, there's no therapy. There's no nothing because we got to wait. I can't bring him home. Where's he going to go? And I'm getting upset. So anyway, let's fast forward now. So he's at rehab. So the first three days, well, first two days, you know, I'm up there with him by his side. Now, you know I am. I love my mister. And um, I, had to, I had to come home. I had to take a shower and I had to get my clothes stuff ready, you know, changed and stuff. And I went up there and they had him in the bathroom. And oh, he didn't. I keep leaving stuff out. Let's back up to wait a minute. I gotta slow down. When he was in the hospital, because of his mouth drawn and he and you know, slur speech and stuff, they had to put him on a diet. And the diet was like more like it's supposed to have been a prey food. So he could swallow it. Well, you know what they were bringing him? Big old pieces of chicken, big old chunks of this, chunk of that. I go, this is not right. The Okay, so six days, he wasn't able to go to the bathroom either. I guess it's because the anesthesia slowed everything down. You know, it kind of puts everything to sleep when they put that stint in his heart. Well, now he's not eating because he can't. So the day before we we left that hospital, they finally got the food right. So he went six days of hardly not eating nothing, nothing, because the knuckleheads couldn't get his diet right. I was livid, guys. I was pure livid. Well, then when... uh. And then they gave him all these muscle relaxers. Remember, he was having spasm in his leg, the bad leg, but he was still having spasms in it. And then they were giving him something for that. And so I don't know. I don't know how he ended up with three different muscle relaxers. So now we, we're back over to the uh, to the rehab. So the second day, remember, I had to go home. I had to change clothes. Dub, 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 dub. So I go in there. They had him in the bathroom. And there's three nurses. And, you know, they had him on a hoist. They hoisted him in there and stuff. Well, I just kind of peeked in there, guys. And when I peeked in there, he looked white as a sheet of paper. I mean, like no color, white. He was whiter than my head. He's whiter than this. And uh, oh my God. So they got him in the bed. And I said, I said, Mister, what's going on? He said, I can't wake up in the morning. He said, they took him down to therapy. He said, I can't wake up. He said, they took me to breakfast. He said, I can't eat anything. Now, they're kind of got this food, you know, where you can eat some, but he couldn't eat. And uh, he said, I was looking out the window. He said, baby, he said, I couldn't focus on anything, on nothing. So I got upset. So I, I, I you know, I'm calling nurses and stuff in. I go, what are y'all giving him? What does it make it where he can't wake up in the morning? And, you know, of course, I know with stroke victims, they sleep a lot. The brain is like, you know, it's not like going, ah, you know, it's kind of working, trying to get all these things connected and doing all this stuff. And it's, it's, it wears itself out. You got to you gotta rest your brain. So they come in, they go, well, she pulled it up and she goes, well, he's on this name, this long name. You know, like I said, I, you know me, I ain't on pill. I don't do pill things, I, you know, if I don't have to. So I'm not, I'm not on medications and stuff. So he said, he's on this. I said, well, what's that? Now that's in the morning. It's a muscle relaxer. And then he takes so-and-so at, you know, middle of the day, another muscle relaxer. 
And then at night, they were giving him a Xanax. He was spaced out. He couldn't do therapy. I went off. I went off between not eating you know, in the hospital all week. He's done gone through a stroke and gone through a heart attack and he's got AFib and now he can't eat over there. Then he comes over here and now he can't function because they got him on all these muscle relaxers and stuff. I mean, I'm just like, I'm losing it. I'm just losing it, guys. Praying I'm losing it, damn. And so I said, no more. So they cut that out. And I said, you give him some, you give him some melatonin at night to help him sleep. You give him a Tylenol if he has some muscle spasms. What they did, the nurse, she says, you're absolutely right. She says, Miss Sheila, she says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a big bag of IVs just to clear, because remember, he's a diabetic. Just clear IVs, he said, she said, and see if we can just wash all this uh, muscle relaxers out of his uh out of his system. I said, I think that's a grandioso idea. So she did it. And I'm trying to condense everything, but guys, it's just so much that happened. So much why I haven't been on here. And I haven't been able to tell you because I I lose it all the time. I don't, you know, possum was bad. This is my husband. And I'm just like, I don't want to be with my husband. Anyway, so the therapy, and I made a book of the therapy. He's supposed to have three uh, extensive therapies a day. And so I started looking at all these, uh, they give a schedule. And I noticed all he was having was just uh, speech therapy. And speech therapy is like, you know, tell you how to swallow. If you're not swallowing good, he can't, they couldn't drink water. They had to put the stuff to thicken the water up or whatever liquid he was drinking. So it's like honey, you know, to swallow. And um, that dog and reading y'all. I'm so, so Lexus, like, thank you. I'm glad y'all. A crawly D to girl, I have been. Bertha, thank you, Bertha. Thank you for all of y'all's prayers. Thank you from Southeast Georgia. I wish I could just put her outside. Well, anyway, so I got with the director of the hospital. I said, I'm like ratchet or something like that because. It was from his food to the muscle relaxers, uh, and then now his therapy. Why isn't he getting the therapy he's supposed to? Y'all have got him down here for, I, I don't, didn't bring, bring my book, but I have a binder, and then I do green if it's speech therapy. I do blue if it's OT, occupational therapy, and then physical therapy is in per, or one of them colors. I have three colors. So I got the director. I said, look at this. All you could see was a purple. It was purple for uh, speech therapy. I said, look. I said, how many greens do you see? How many blues do you see? So what they done was that they called for a staff meeting and said, then they came back and said, Mrs. Watts, or Mr. Watts, what we're going to do, we're going to keep you, uh, uh, we're going to extend another week out because, you know, as all of us are talking, you are not where you need to be. Boy. I just had to come to Jesus meeting with them and the director of that, that joint. And I ain't going to name a name, but I, I, just, I just had to come to Jesus meeting because I said, this is ridiculous. All y'all do is speech thing. I said, not give no occupational therapy or physical therapy. I said, how is this going to memory thing from his head down to his limbs? If it's not repetition, if it's not, I said, the first three months is vitally important, especially with people with a stroke. You got to keep it moving. You got to keep it working. You got to keep doing therapy. And he's not. I said, I said, heck, bells. You know what I said. I said, I could just take him home. He could lay at home. I said, lay it up here and y'all charging X amount. I know we got insurance. I said, but still, you're charging. You're charging for what? For him just laying here? I could take him home and he can do that. So I got mad about that. 
Oh, here, here's another thing. She said, uh, oh, he said, he said, baby, I don't want you to tell anybody. Not at the time. I'm telling you now. I don't want you to tell anybody. I said, mister, not any. Not even he, he said, nobody. And he was pretty adamant. He said, I mean it. Promise me you're not going to tell anybody. Well, there's my husband in that condition. I said, I promise I won't. Of course, my son knew. I knew. He knew. The doctors knew. But anybody else, he did not, he, for whatever his reason was. So, because certain people didn't hear from him in like a few days, save even four days, they sent the sheriff out to my place of residency. Sure did. And then, you know, I'm the I'm the bad person because I didn't let other some certain certain people know and that it wasn't right of me that they should have known. Look, I'm already going through. I don't need this. I don't need it. I'm going by and he told me three times at different times, one in front of the doctor, one in front of, of Joe, and of course me privately. And he made, he said, once I get to a certain point, when I get there, he said, then we can. He said, I don't know everything that's going on with me. And he says, and until you know, he kind of got his mind to a position to where he wanted to talk to certain people himself. Right? Right? Well, it's their feelings are more important than his. I don't, can't believe you did that. I got chewed out. Chewed up from the what's it? There you go from the floor up, floor down. No floor up. Yes, yeah, floors at the bottom. And and I'm telling this really nicely. And I go, you know what? When it comes down to it, God's first, your spouse is second, your children is third, and uh, all you know, it's a pecking order. And. If my husband tells me not to do it and makes me promise, by golly, that's what I'm going to do. I don't care of anybody else's feelings. It don't mean jack squat to me. And I think they've got the message. They're selfish. Very selfish. They're, they feel like their feelings are more important than what his wishes or his feelings are. They're uh, the big high dog in the pecking order. No, it don't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. Not with my husband. I need to get off that topic, don't I? Okay, so he's at rehab right now. And, uh, It's been tough. He finally stood. Oh, when they knew that, I mean, I told him, I said, I'll go over your head. He's lost almost a week with no PT or no T. I said, somebody better. They go, well, we have been shorthanded. The nurse said, that. she says, well, I think what the reason is Miss Watson has been shorthanded. I said, I don't care. And I don't want to hear no excuses. My husband wanted to come up here. We heard it was a great, great hospital, great rehab a uh, place that y'all do extensive therapy three times a day. He couldn't wait to get up here. He laid up in that hospital, uh, the other hospital, I said, for three extra days that he didn't have to just make sure the insurance paid to get here. And if somebody has to work overtime, by God, they better do it because y'all better have him in there and doing therapy on him. Yep, I was Miss Ratchet. Is that the nurse's name? Oh, anyway. So day before yesterday, they had him up. They let me go back. I guess they want to go. They let her back here so we show her that she, we're doing therapy on this man. So they had him standing. It's hard from him. Very hard. He tells me all the time. He says, baby, I'm so sorry. I said, mister, it's nothing to be sorry for. He said, you didn't sign up for this, did you? I said, we made a vow. A 
love you with all of my heart. And we made a vow. And we made a vow through thick or thin, better or worse, sickness and health. Did we not? Yeah. I said, you do the same for me, right? You know I would. Now, he ain't talking like that. I'm telling you. He's better now. His speech has gotten a whole lot better, by the way. And he can swallow a little bit better. He still, they don't want him to aspirate, you know, go down to his lung. And then we, and that, and then we're asking for another big issue. He don't need any more. So he stood and then they try to get him to shift his weight, you know, to understand. Now he can feel, let me explain. He can feel like if you do this, you know, the doctors, they're running their hands down his arms. They go, which one does one feel uh, stronger than the other one? Does more have more feeling than the other? He goes, no, they're the same. He has the same feelings on both sides. He just can't move it. And it's like I was, I was sitting there um, one night and he lifted his right leg and he was, you know, he lifted it up. And, and, you know, that's his good leg. So the next thing I know, I look over there. He, he was lifting his left leg, and they flexed his foot, and he put it down. I'm going, oh. Then when they were trying to put him in the wheelchair and bring his foot, no, he was in the wheelchair, and they were, he could take his right foot off and put it on the floor. They were getting ready to reach down and get his left foot. He lifted it about that much. When he's getting ready to cough, you know how many sometimes you cough and you <coughs> you do your hand like that. Um, he started coughing. His left arm only came up about four or five inches, and his and he and he did his fist like that as to go, <coughs> but it only came up so far, and he still used his right arm, you know, for his to cover his mouth. And I'm going, Mister, are you doing that? He, wasn't, he said he wasn't doing it. But it's like his brain is trying to connect and say, this is what you, you used to do. This is what you're supposed to do. And I'm trying to connect. So it's like he's got to be keep repetition and moving his limbs. And that's why this therapy is so important. So, buddy, let me tell you today, they, don't, they usually take off on Sundays. They had his behind twice. They knew I was going to be there today. They had his behind in the therapy twice today. Twice. And I said, I want to see some results. Can somebody write me? Uh, and nursing to attend those meetings. You're absolutely right. Now he's got a UTI. I told Mr. Day, they're teaching him how to get along around in a wheelchair. I guess they're going to come out here and look to see if he needs a bed, um, hospital bed, or uh, whatever his needs are. I've been looking around myself, and I've come across a hospital bed. And um, I think we're my son and I are supposed to get it Tuesday evening or Wednesday sometime. The guy's going to bring it to us. It's only been used for two weeks. And um, the gentleman's wife went to the hospital. She had cancer. Of course, she passed away. So he just wants to get it out of the house. He has bad memories. So anyway, I, um, you know, I'm not waiting to see about the insurance and stuff. I'm trying to get everything I can get. I found, I found him a shower chair. For ten bucks, looks brand spanking new. I got him a walker for eight bucks, and also the same thing. And so, I know that I'm going to have to move things around in my house. Um, they feel it might be a long haul, but I know my God can do anything. I know that, just like that, He can connect everything, and. And, oh, and they said, well, the stroke is, it's on his right side. They said, it's down deep where it's hit his motor skills, his motor functions. 
And, uh, but I know God can do anything. And the Lord spoke to me. Let me see y'all write me. It is an electric hospital bed. It is. And it's also got a crank on it in case the electricity goes out. And uh, it raises it high. And, you know, the back goes up and down any level that he wants, the feet and everything. It's like it's a, it's a hospital bed. It's a regular hospital bed. But um, anyway, and, you know, I ain't going to let him lay on just anything. Heck no. I think that's about all I can tell you guys. I I did want to come on. I know I had uh, somebody writing me right now. My brain's like, and that dog is getting on my nerves so bad. Just will not stop. I can't believe that she can hear me all the way in here. It seemed like she barked so much she'd lose her voice. I love her. Don't get me wrong. But she's just, you know, me coming in and I got all this on me and I'm missing Mr. You know, you look around here and oh, he said, he said, uh, hey, he said, it's, uh, I said, well, the grass is uh, growing out there. It was green. I said, be growing soon. He goes, I want to be out mowing. Now we have a zero churn, so you got to do you know, your arms like that. I said, Mr. Oh, Thank you, Will. Remind me again in just a minute. I said, Mister, um, you know you can't do that right now. I said, because you got to have both your arms to move it. And that's why you got to work hard in therapy so we can get this mobility. I said, but I'll tell you what. He goes, what? I said, I'll just put a little cart on behind the, the, the mower. I'll put you in that cart, and we both can be mowing. I'll just pull you around everywhere you go. I said, so you can be right with me, and we'll just mow it together. What you say about that? He's like, with his little mouth. Well, you got to bring some humor in it, don't you? See, he's a piddler. Remember that? He can't sit and watch TV very long. He's got to get out. He's got to be doing something. He's an outside guy. He's got to... He's got to be outside when it's warm weather, hot weather. I mean, he's constantly outside. And, you know, and that was a blessing that day. I want to say this. Because normally when he goes, I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to be piddling. That's his word. I'm going to piddle. So when he goes to piddle, I don't check on him because he's out there piddling. He's from here to there. I mean, he's just doing all kinds of things down the shed. You know, he's just doing all kinds of stuff. If... <laughs> If this had happened while he was outside, I would be thinking he's just out there piddling. But it happened when he was inside. And we had him that quick at the hospital. But that doggone heart attack. But here we go again. It was kind of like a blessing in disguise. I know it sounds crazy, but that they found that. It was his heart. He could be laying out there in, in my yard down the hill somewhere. And I wouldn't know it. And I could have lost him for real. Okay, Willa, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kara. I'll tell you this. So I'm writing... I'm writing to go see Mister, and I'm just praying, and I, I'm I'm just, yeah. You, know you bind the enemy up because see, God doesn't put sickness on us. God said, above all, I wish you walk in divine health. Sickness is not of God. I don't care who says that. No, no, it is not of him. Sometimes we make choices how we feed our body and what we do. We don't kick, take care of our own bodies. But the Lord don't put no sickness on you. We do it our own selves. Because we rather eat a bag of donuts and 
and some uh, RC cola or something like that, not eat healthy foods and things. But anyway, so I'm riding down the mountain and I'm praying and I'm binding and I'm just talking to the Lord. I can't remember it verbatim. But I'm going to tell you the best of my ability. And he said, as I'm just driving, and you know, and I heard it so distinctly. And he said, Sheila, do you remember my friend Lazarus? And I was like, John was like, yeah, I'm hearing him. I'm like, yes, Lord. Do you remember Martha and Mary and how they were just had their hands just ringing? And they were summoning me to come on, you know, because Lazarus was sick. Lazarus, you know, he died. Of course, he died. I said, yes, sir. And like I said, I'm paraphrasing. And he said, and on the fourth day, he said, and I stood there. And he said, what did I do? I said, Lord, you called them to come forth. He says, that's right. He said, everybody else didn't think that that was possible because especially the Jews and everything and being on the fourth day, you know, the spirit's kind of gone then. And they just think there was not any possibility. He says, how long has Keith been laying there? It's over a week, Lord. He says, nothing's too impossible for me. I said, yes, sir. He said, but when I called Lazarus to come forth, he says, I stood there and I used my voice and it projected it forward. Lazarus, come forth. Did you think that it was easy for Lazarus to get up? Did you think that it was easy when he was wrapped in those grave linens from his head to his toe? Do you think it was easy for him to get up and to come forward? I, I mean, I never thought about that. You know, even read Lazarus, you know, I just never thought about that. We always just think about, it, you know, Lazarus come forth, he comes on out too. And I said, he said that he was shuffling. He said he was shuffling, but my spirit. Spirits on, he said, and he came forth, even with all the grave linen on him, even with him just shuffling the little steps that he could do, but he came forth. I said, yes, sir. He said, I want you to speak to Keith, and I want y'all to speak to Keith. And you tell him to come forth. You speak to those limbs, and you says, I've given you authority, Sheila. I've given you the authority. He says, now you, you stand up and you walk in that authority. So guess what? I told those limbs to come forth, to move, no matter what was the stroke to come forth and to move, even if it's just a little bit as Lazarus was just barely shuffling to get to get out of that, 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 that tomb. Come forth. And I talked to my other friend. And she said, and I told her about Keith. And of course she was upset too. She knows Keith was my first love. He was the love of my life still is and uh, she says Sheila the Lord had me uh, studying about the dry bones she says I don't know why he had me studying she says I was even asking well why why you got me studying this for she says well now I know and she says I'm calling those dry bones as well to come forth I prophesy over those dry bones, the sinews and the veins and the, you know, everything and the skin to come and said, and they came to life. They came to life. She says, as you're calling those limbs to come forth, I'm also speaking to those, those dry dead bones to come forth and to live. 
So I'm just asking you, I'm really trusting in God and this because as soon as I said that, that's when he went into therapy. And that's why I started seeing he was wiggling his toes. Just it was just the slightest little bit, just just a little. But see, before you could say, Keith, can you can you give me a thumbs up? Couldn't do it. Keith, can you raise your leg? Keith, can you wiggle your toes? Keith, can you do it? He couldn't do it. I mean, you just, he's like, you just look at it, but it wouldn't do anything on command. But when they were telling him that in therapy, there was little toes. It's barely moving. Then he was able to raise his leg. And then, you know how you lay on your, on your back and you got your knees up? And then you spread them apart, then you bring them together. You spread them apart, bring them together. Now, it was clumsy. It was very clumsy. And then he got very tired. But that left leg, I could see it. When it went out, he was pulling it. But it was slow. So, see, we're trying to get that connection. Remember what I said, Sheila? Lazarus, come forth. Speak to it. Well, that's it. So I know when Mister comes home, we're still going to be working on. I'm you know, God can do it just like that. And he can just get up, uh, you know. So him be, being pushed in a wheelchair out of that doggone hospital, he'll be pushing the wheelchair. I said, "Here, baby, let me take me for a ride. Push me out. We got things to do. We got chickens that we want to get. We got a garden to plant. You know." We've got to go riding because he, he can't drive. I don't know. I just I just want to tell you guys, and I'll try to keep you abreast as to what's going on. I'm sorry, I haven't been reading my uh uh, uh friend Mr. Decent Air Mattress like I have tubes and flight deflate. Send you and Mr. So many prayers. Thank you, Bertha. I appreciate it. Tammy, hello. I'm glad you're here. Gwen, let's see. Um, hey, Sheila. I mean, good luck with your new puppy. Hope you and your hubby have the energy to keep up. Labradoodles are very energetic. So sorry to hear about your, your kitty. Yeah, Gwen. Uh, you know, it is a puppy. And uh, puppies are going to be puppies. Stand on that promise. I am, Willa. Amy, Sheila, you are, are covered in the blood of Jesus. The Lord Jesus has your back. Uh, my internet is jagging. We'll watch a replay. Okay. Kara, I understand. I understand. You're in my prayers. Barbara, I will be praying for Mr. and you. I will add you both to our prayer list so others can lift you both. God will heal Mr. in his time. So continue to be faithful and let God do the work. Absolutely, but he's given us authority too, hasn't he? You know, I think, um, I don't know, my mind's going so many places, Barbara. So many places. I know, everybody tells me I have a good good friend who lives down in the one of the big cities and she goes Sheila she says I'm worried about you and she says because you're totally exhausted and I am you know between the dog getting up to pee my son comes over and helps me but you know he works from home too so he can only limit his time and it's a puppy and she's want she wants to chew on everything I can't walk without her trying to grab my pet's leg I, you know, I, I've even offered to pay somebody if they would watch her for a couple of weeks until I get Mr. Home. And you see this going on. I mean, that, can y'all hear that? It's nonstop. It's like, I don't know how, she's, how she can keep going. Like the Energizer Bunny. It's just, her batteries just don't run out. I think I'm going to get some CBD oil. I'm going to put some, a few little drops in her doggone food. Maybe she'll relax. She needs one of them muscle relaxers 
Mr. Had. Whew. Boy, maybe I need one. I haven't been able to sleep much. Anyway, I think that's about all. Uh, I didn't mean to boohoo on you guys. I just want to be able to tell you what was going on, where I've been, what's I mean, what's been happening with Mr. Why I'm solo tonight. I told him that I needed to go on uh, on uh, YouTube. I said, I got to talk to my peeps. You know, I got to let everybody know what's going on. That Some people have been asking, Mr. And I said, they miss us. And, you know, we were just going to make sure this year we're going to do a lot of videos. And, hey, maybe we'll still, we still will, especially when Mr. comes home. I've been taking pictures of him. Did, did, did y'all see where I put where they had him taking him out? on the airlift, the helicopter. I think I posted that one as the um, thumbnail, I think. But I've been taking different pictures of him. I took uh, some in the therapy uh, when he was doing different therapies and stuff like that. But I've been taking my crochet. I've been taking the word, I'm, you know, because um, he's tired and he sleeps a lot. But they say with stroke victims, uh, I've already mentioned this, that they do sleep. They sleep a lot. I think the brain is just rebooting, you know, and it's called what neuroelasticity or something to that nature. And, uh, but he's got to be repetitive and, you know, he has to pick up his arm and move it. I mean, it's just pitiful. And the thing of it is he's left-handed. So this happened on his left side. So it's hard for him. He's having to relearn how to eat, you know, eat with his right hand. And um, things like that. And he's a big guy. Mister's a big guy. And I said, you need this therapy because of Mister. I said, you know, when they're teaching him how to help getting out of the bed to a wheelchair, wheelchair to the bed, you know, so on, to the toilet. Um, I said, because you're going to have to be helping me. It's only me and him here. No. I hope she sleeps good tonight. I just hope pray she sleeps good. Y'all be, pray, be praying for me, but also be praying for Lily. That she gets a good night's sleep. But anyway, it's been a it's been a journey since uh, March the 7th. Uh his uh expected date to come home is April the 3rd. So I'm hoping that uh I'm gonna try to get everything I can here and things moved and stuff, you know, for wheelchair accessibility i've got to find out whether or not insurance you know takes care of ramps you know to get inside the house so and i told him i said when it gets warm and stuff that i said mister what we'll, we'll do i said you can't go out in the yard i said lord if i let go of that wheelchair you'll be rolling down the hill like one of them cartoons and they're just going rolling down the hill and i'm trying to be running after you i said so we ain't going outside I said, I'm going to take you to you and get the walker or to get to a cane. Then we can go out outside. I said, but what we're going to do, I said, like when I'm doing something in the backyard, you know, we'll sit you out there on the back deck. And you know, I'll give you a glass of tea. You know, I like tea. I said, I'll fix you a glass of tea. Maybe have lunch out there on the table. And I said, you know, if I have to, I told him, I said, I'm going to still try to plant the garden. I said, but, mister, it's not going to be as big as what we wanted. I just want enough vegetables that it just feeds us. I mean, I probably won't be canning, although I wanted to can. But we just got to play it by ear, right? You got to play it by ear. And um, I've got to take a, over all the duties like the weed eating and all that kind of stuff and all the little things. And see, that's another thing. You don't really realize how much your spouse does. We take them for granted. Like he says, I'm going to go out and weed. I go, okay. You don't think about it. He's out there weed eating. Well, now Sheila's got to weed eat. Sheila's got, of course, I love mowing, but I've got to be, I've got to be doing all the mowing and the weed eating and uh, the gardening and I, I, I don't think we're going to get any chickens because I can't handle that right now. And then I got this puppy and taking care of the puppy and feeding the cats outside, which he took care of that. I got to do. I mean, it's like I'm doing my my end and his end plus take care of him. So y'all pray for me. Please pray for me. I need the strength. But it's okay. It's okay. I got the determination that I'm going to do this and 
I got to. What choice you got? You know what I mean? That's where it shows you whether or not it's true love or not. You know what he said today. I said, mister, um, will you be glad to come home? He goes, yes, I will. He says, or oh, wherever I end up. He's thinking he might have to go to a nursing home. No. No, you belong home. You ain't going to be no doggone nursing home. Now, if I got breath in my body, I mean, if I have to eat Wheaties, I got to eat spinach, I got to whatever I got to do, but my baby's coming home. My mister's coming home. This is where he belongs. And I think when you come home, that you feel better, you know? It's just something about being at home. But anyway, quilting, um... I haven't done any more. I started a quilt for uh, both one of the grand uh, sons and granddaughter. Um, I got the front done. I think I showed you that. I haven't started on anything else because I've been busy with Mister. But I think maybe, maybe in some of this when it's a little bit of downtime, and maybe you know, maybe when he's sleeping at night and I can't sleep, I can come in here in the sunroom. And just so uh, really relaxes me. I have been taking my crochet up to the hospital. So, you know, when I'm sitting there, when he's sleeping, then I just crochet. I wasn't planning on starting another one, but I can't just sit up there. Whew. I mean, just see it. Not unless he needs something. You know, and I'm always, if he moves, I'm going, you know, you know how you do. I go, Mr. You need something? Mr. You, you know. And uh, I've had to bathe him a couple of times. You know, he appreciated that and washed the shampoo his head. Where, where's all these people supposed to be doing that? You know what I mean? I think he just wants me to do it, though. But, yeah, the uh, so the crochet, and I've kind of picked that back up to give me something to do while I'm there. But, anyway, that's all I got. I just wanted to update you. And uh, for better or worse was the title. So, you know, sometimes we don't know what's going to hit us. But I'll tell you one thing. I'll, I'll never give up on Mr. Never. He's the love of my life. I told you about that, you know. We were childhood sweethearts way right back in the day. He was my first love. I told him, I said, you're my first love and you're my last love. He's my Mr. I miss him walking around here. And sometimes he'd get on my doggone nerves. Y'all know he did. he'd be that grunting all the time. <clears throat> now, you know, it's like, well, maybe a little bit. You know, I, I said, well, I sure I sure miss Mr. Kind of going, <clears throat> I go, well, not a whole lot, Lord, but I do miss it a little bit. And, you know, I just, I just miss him. I, I just... Him being here, you know, it's just the two of us, and I, and I miss him being here. I miss talking to him. I, I miss us watching a goofy show together. I miss us drinking a cup of coffee in the morning. You know, I miss us sitting out on the deck. I miss us sitting in a rocking chair on, on the front deck, just looking at the deer out in the yard. I, I miss him. I miss him, you know, when he's weed eating and I'm mowing the grass. I miss him. We just take these things for granted, you know. We need to stop, slow down, and enjoy each other. We don't know, you know, when the Lord's going to call us home. I don't know when the Lord's going to call me home. So we have to enjoy each other while we can. I guess that's my little bit of fussing, y'all. Well, anyway. I would say like and share. Uh, this is kind of not a really one of the shareable videos, you know. I guess the journey of the stroke, Mister's recovery. Um, I will be coming on, you know, with that probably. But um, let me see. Uh, got it back. Oh, good, Kara. And resources and strength to take care of Mister. It will happen. You bet you know, nursing home. I really appreciate all of y'all with the prayers. 
I mean, I'm sincere. You can't get enough prayers, can you? Heck no. And a lot of people have got them on this prayer list. And, um, and I appreciate that as well. But I guess I'm going to go ahead and get off here. You guys know that I love you very much. I hope you understand now why I haven't been on, why I haven't maybe responded to some of the comments. Uh, it's my mind wasn't there. Only thing my mind's been on is Mr. And I want him to come home soon. And maybe once he gets home that we can, uh, we can do a little video, you know, or maybe um, I don't want to embarrass him I'm not trying to, but uh, uh, he really enjoys uh, when y'all come on and talk to him. And uh, Mrs. Smokey, Smokey and, and uh, Bobby used to or on here, used to be on here. Of course, it's Sunday night. You know, people are in church and stuff. So most, but sometimes they don't even have Sunday night services anymore. But anyway, I, I you know I wanted to come on as quick as possible. I know this coming week is going to be very very busy for me, and uh, try to get everything scheduled for Mister and moved everything in here moved. Um, there's some other things. I can't remember. I got a hair appointment. I got to go to, I'm going to be looking like Raggedy Ann. I had to have that changed so I could go early in the morning because visiting hours really don't start until, and they won't let me in, um, 12 o'clock. So I have to leave out here. So there's a drive to and from every single day, which is where my behind out. So I got about three and three, three and a half hours of driving just driving and then going up there sitting with him and then coming back to yappy mouth back there and uh, clean up pee. And uh, we put her in a shower. I told my son, I said, you put her a little yappy mouth in the shower. That way, if she does pee, it'll go down the drain. Of course, got her blanket and stuff in there. It's a big shower. It's a walk-in shower. So I said, cause she got out of that playpen a couple of times and just run all over the place. And I got to shampoo some carpets. Thank goodness these are just kind of like throw rug carpets, most of them. So I have to replace them. But anyway, I'm just busy. It's just busy. And uh, But anyway, it seemed like it was something else I want to tell you. That's why I'm kind of hanging on because I'm thinking there's something else that I want to tell you. But for the life of me, I can't. I can't think of it. I guess in the next video... Um, I don't know when that's going to be. Please don't y'all lose me or unsubscribe me because well, she ain't no on it. Please have some compassion to understand that, you know, why I haven't been on. And um, I know Mr. misses you. Like I said, he really enjoys the comments when y'all talk to him. Somebody asked him, I forgot. Remember that video? He had that tooth that was blacked out. And somebody asked him, I want to know if he got his tooth fixed. I told Mr. about that. He started laughing. And I said, they want to know if you, you got your tooth fixed yet or not. But um, anyhow, I love you guys. I really, truly do. You're my family. You're my friend. I don't have any friends up here. I don't, I don't have a girlfriend I could go out with and go, you know, go shopping or not. I can't do that now. But I'm just saying, that, you know, once we left the big city, kind of left everybody behind so it's been hard here to make friends you meet acquaintances i'm talking about a friend and sometimes you just need that you know you need a friend and y'all are my friends that i can sit here and talk to you and you're conversing with me and i really appreciate that it means the world to me to have y'all as my family and my friends and now my prayer partners for mister and myself for strength but anyway, let me get off here. Unless y'all got a question. Y'all got a question. I'll wait just a, just a minute more if y'all got a question. Let's see. Okay, thank you, Tammy. I'm trying to take care of myself. Uh, I really am, Jackie. I haven't been eating that well. I need, but you know, it's hard to fix for just one person. I was telling Mr. that today. He, he, you know, he's so worried about me that here he hadn't been eating good. They bring in his meal. I'm there for lunch and his dinner. And uh, 
he'll take a few bites. He goes, here, you, you eat the rest of this. I, I'm not eating your food. He said, what have you eaten? See, he's worried about me eating. I said, don't worry about me. I'm fine. And uh, so, you know what I ate today? Oh, oh, and oh. Um, I will tell you this. Remember I said I was going to lose weight? Well, that this ain't the way to lose weight. But I have lost weight. Remember I said when I started out, I clocked in with you guys. I told you I weighed 189.6 pounds. Y'all remember that? Some of you are just here to go, good Lord from Zion. I did. Remember when I went and got them new pair of britches and I held them up and got one of the videos about the britches I was holding up. And when I was in the store and I hold, hold up those britches like, or held, hold up the britches, I held up them britches like that. And I was going, man, that's going to swallow me whole. And I get in the dressing room, they fit like, like a, I fit like a, a bug in a rug. I mean, snug as a bug in a rug. I went, I'm losing weight. That's what gave me an incentive. I only bought one pair of bridges. I said, I'm not buying a bunch of bridges. And then I'm just going to settle me weighing this 180, almost 190 pounds. Oh, no. So anyway, I went from that to now I weigh, what was that I weighed? Lord, help me. 176 point two pounds so i've lost some weight but i'm saying all that because today you know what i ate stopped at the store dollar general and i said dollar general family dollar i think it was a family dollar i hadn't been in them since mutt was a pup but i bought uh mr a little bunny about this big i said every time you see this bunny then you know that i'm telling you mr i love you i'm seeing you kisses so he said, put it right there in that window so I can look at it. I said, I will. He loved that little bunny. But anyway, so while I was in there, I saw a bag of them doggone little donuts. They got cinnamon, cinnamon donuts. You know that bag of donuts is gone? I ate them all. Not one sitting. It don't matter. I still ate them in the same day. I don't want to get on. And now I got to go not eat nothing. Now y'all saying this, you don't know eat nothing. But I'm telling you, I think it's just because I'm nervous and I got that anxiety and I got, so I just kind of, I just like, I'm good. and you know what I ate for breakfast this morning? I'm going to tell you my, my nutrition today. This morning, I didn't have no coffee. I got to get me some coffee pots because when Mr.'s here, we fix a little pot of coffee. But since it's just me, I ain't going to go in there and fix a pot of coffee while well, I know I'm only going to drink one cup. But I'm out of Keurig cup and little cup things. So I looked at it. I said, oh, I got some coffee. It was, I fixed that thing. I was going, oh, boy, I think this coffee's going to be good this morning because Miss Yappy Mouth. So I started drinking. It was cappuccino. I didn't want no cappuccino. Then I was hungry. I said, well, what am I going to eat? You know what I ate for breakfast? Carrots. I sure did. I bet you I ate about six carrots for breakfast. Now, ain't that some kind of combination? Carrots and cinnamon donuts. That's my meal today. I got to do better, don't I? Because I don't want to gain that weight back. I hear Miss Clippyfoot or Mr. Clippyfoot in there. He's probably telling us, uh, Sammy, he missing me. He has an anxiety disorder. So when I came in, man, he was so glad to see me. But I had to jump on here and be with you guys. So I fed them, but I haven't spent any quality time with them. And Miss Yappy Mouth stopped. Listen, the sound of silence. Ain't that wonderful? So I'm going to go spend some little time with him. And did y'all have any questions? Remember, I asked if y'all had any questions. You know, you just got comments and praying for me and stuff. And Mr., thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, prayers my husband had a detached retina oh my jesus partial blind in one of his eyes 66 we had to downsize to a single wide i know how you feel hanging there oh you know another thing about a single wide or even a double wide because it's a mobile home is that i was going um I better measure them doors, you know, because I told you everything in a double water the mobile home is small. The wheelchair might not even fit through it. 
I was going to put them in the guest bedroom here and then kick on this little, the guest bathroom to be real close, you know. Well, heck, fire that bathroom door there for the uh, the guest bathroom. Ain't but like this big. So I can't push a wheelchair in there. So I got to put them on the other side of the house, which is, that's another story. I'm going to ask friends to pray for you, mister. Love you, my Bertha, I love you too, sweet. And of course, I, you know, I always have you up in prayer. Mister is being taken care of, so he's not alone. I did finally realize. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember, Mister is being taken care of, so he has he is not alone. I had to finally realize that. But with your husband in the hospital, that's what they were telling me. Go, she only need to get some rest. Well, Mister wants to be up there every day, every day. I mean, how do you say no, you know? Well, my husband, yeah, that's okay, right. And uh, my, my friend from the big city, she goes, Sheila, you need to get some rest. She says, I've never heard you like this, or you'd be like this. She says, you're totally exhausted. I said, I am, but I don't want to tell Mr. that. I don't want to bring any more. And he can't. And here's another thing. The doctor said, you remember when I was telling you about everybody think their feelings more important than his, and you should <laughs> is that uh, they put him on something said that he did not need any kind of anxiety, you know, somebody to make him feel guilty. I'm just, I'm paraphrasing that. In other words, he doesn't need anybody up here to, uh, to stimulate any kind of anxiety or make him feel guilty that he, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to tell anybody. And he did, he does not need that at all. Right now, Mr. is kind of going into uh a little bit of depression and they said that they wanted to give him something it's called post stroke depression because it's taking away his manhood he's thinking well, how am i going to do anything you know uh i'm not good for nothing i don't want to be here he hasn't said that but these are the things thoughts that stroke victims can go through they feel like there's no more hope so he didn't need any of that to make him feel guilty. Well, you know what? Well, you know you're supposed to always tell me. We made a pact. No. No. It's what he says. Right? Y'all agree with me. Am I on this little boat by myself out here in this lake? Well, anyway. All right. Get off here, Sheila. I got to get off here. Y'all tired of me running my mouth. Most wheelchairs won't fit through these I know it. Measure them. So you have to remove door. I, I, I thought about that too. Had a problem with my mom's wheelchair and our double wide. I pray you won't have that. I guess we're just going to have to make a whole new hole because I want him home. You know what I mean, Barbara? I got to have him. This one here, I mean, it's 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 a bitsy, teensy, weensy. But I think the one in the in our master bathroom I think it's like 29 and a half inches wide. I don't know how big wheelchairs, because he's a big man. I said, well, I have to take off the door. So that's what about another inch. So I'm hoping. Oh, and one of the ladies said like on the wheelchair wheels that they have like a, like a hub. You got the wheel. Then you got another little said that uh, you possibly could take off one of them. Maybe take off the right one. No, the left one since he can't use his left arm. And then he can just push with his right one and use his foot. They're teaching them that now in uh, therapy. I know it. You're right about that. But but we do love our double wise, don't we, Barbara? We sure do. I love my double wide. All right. Well, guys, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Tammy, you got a 16 wide, 80 foot long, big single. Yeah, um, or even where I'm at, um, it, it looks kind of bland. It's not really bland. I'm back here in the den, you know, where the fireplace and stuff is. But in the morning, I was telling Mr. that today, in the morning, the sun, he could see off, you know, our, our uh, primary bedroom. Master bedroom only has what's well, a double window in the front. It doesn't have any windows on the sides or on the side. 
This has one that's here, two windows here, and one over there. And a lot of sunlight, morning sunlight comes in. I'm going to take out with this table and maybe set up. I asked him, I said, Mr. Where do you want to be? I don't want to just be saying, well, you're going to be wherever I want you to be. You know, uh, so I gave him the choice. I said, you be thinking about it. Because when that bed comes in, I'm going to set it up. So you kind of think about where where you would like to be located at. So there goes Yappy Math. So I've kind of given him a choice because right now he doesn't feel like he's in control of, of anything, anything. So I want him, it's like I told him when I'm out in the yard, you can help me when I plant things. We both will make decisions. So I, I want to get him involved as much as I possibly can. And what he can do, you know, even right now, maybe with one arm, then let's do it. I want him to feel useful and needed. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway. Y'all, I've been saying this, I don't know how many times, but I need to get off of here. Okay, well, thank you again. Remember, guys, that I love you very, very much. I appreciate you very, very much. And uh, I will try to keep you posted as to Mr.'s recovery and maybe in between, maybe just my crazy day. Maybe I'll just take you from room to room, my craziness with that dumb dog. And, um, show you Lily and her mean self. Oh, Lord. Uh, ours was too high for him. I had to buy a new bed for hubby. Oh, you know what, Greenhouse? Mine is too. Y'all seen that? The, the big guy. She said, how are you getting that bed? I told my mister that today. I said, mister, you ain't going to be able to get in that bed. I mean, even if you start recovering, you ain't going to be able to get in that bed. And I said, so what I was thinking about doing is take, uh, we got two drawers on one side, two drawers on the other side. So you don't need slats. I'm going to take out the box springs. They're kind of this heart, this wood thing. And I'll take that out and then set the mattress right on top of the, the drawers. Um, you know, there, it's like a floor. And uh, that will bring it way down. That's when he's able to get into uh, you know, the bed. Right now, he needs that hospital bed so he can elevate himself. And uh, it's got the bars on it to help him. And it's also got a bar that he can pull to pull himself up, you know, pull up with. And he was asking, you know, he said, uh, in, this, in the hospital, he goes, I need one of them bars so I can you know, pull myself. So this, 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 people are throwing that in. It's like, praise the Lord. I just think that was a God sin. But you're right. Um, the bed, I said, I'll never go back to the big, the big bed. I mean, um, or I might have to buy a new one, just a very small one. So it's easy to sit on and stuff. But you're absolutely right about that, Greenhouse. You're, you're absolutely right. Now, Greenhouse, what, what, what happened... Uh, what happened to your husband? Did he have a stroke or something? Uh, when you said, you know, about having to buy him a new bed and stuff, I was just wondering. Alara, my heart goes out to you, sending prayers for you both. I'll be praying every day for healing. Thank you and comfort for you that only the Lord can give. Thank you. Medicare will pay for a hospital bed. Uh, yeah, I heard that, um, Jackie. Um, then I heard that well, my uh, insurance agent, and he's kind of a friend of ours too, he says what they'll do is that they will something about get in touch with a facility and that you can rent a bed, something like that. This bed's only $300. Well, $300 is a lot of money, but I'm saying, um, and I figure after Mr. Finish with it, which I'm hoping it's just like that. I'm hoping that his recovery, you know, it's like Lazarus, his, his recovery is going to be speedily. And then we just sell the bed and you know, get our money back. Uh, there are lots of things that okay, will supply for you. Check it too. Uh, also, some of the home nursing help. My mom had a lady come. Yeah, I think they said they're going to send therapy out for him, uh, outpatient therapy. He was walking up these stairs at work and broke his femur straight up. Oh, that makes me hurt. 
Oh, I'll say I'll be had to go. Oh, no. Oh, he lost his job for that? And was he, he was at work? Oh, no. You know, he said about disability. I'm so sorry, Greenhouse. I'm so sorry. Man, that's a that's tr truly a bummer. People in these places, like I was, you know, fussing about early. If you go, anybody do go back and listen to the beginning of it. What I've had to go through with both the hospital and this therapy place, but you you got to get in there and you got you got to fight for them because they're so sick and can't move and they just feel helpless. Somebody like me, you know, I have to be an advocate for my husband. And uh, so, you know, like something like that, man. I mean, you said uh, disability, yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, speaking of that, though, what I was saying is that Mr. Can't Drive anymore. In there, like, um, we have to go to the the driver's place or something? Do you have to have a note from the doctor or maybe the therapist saying he's not able to drive? That way we can get a handicap sticker. Uh, and the only reason I'm saying that, so when I have to take him back to the doctor or he's doing uh, uh, outpatient you know, where he can get around, we'll take him to, there's a place that they do a physical therapy uh, uh, in town that we can take him there. That way I can have a, close up parking spot. So parking way back in the back of the parking lot and trying to make my way up to get in the door. I'll be wore out. So that's a yes, a doctor's that thank you, Grace. Well then that's what I'm gonna so then you go to the DMV, is that correct? You get the, the note just says that he's not able to drive or whatever. Then you go to ask the doctor to get you uh the paperwork for handicap. There should be not be a problem. Okay, yes. Greenhouse, yes. Yes, your doctor can give you. Okay. Good. Uh, my niece is 42 and she had a many strokes years ago. Yes, she got the right therapy now. Got her hand open. Only uses a cane now. Great. Uh, make sure he gets. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I was telling him. I was trying to get all the therapy now. Like I said, I had to come down on him. I said, you know. If people have to work overtime, then they work overtime because he's already missed out a week. So then I think they'll come here and I get so many uh, therapy sessions here. And then after that, then I'm going to be taking them to therapy. I'm not quitting. I want him to get the mobility. They said the first three months, if y'all have heard that before with stroke victims, the first three months is really crucial, really crucial. So we just got to keep them limbs going. So, yeah, the therapy, I don't think it will ever end until he says himself, you know, I don't want any more or whatever. I think I'm doing good that I can do this on my own or, you know, some kind of exercise or whatever on his own. I do have a TENS unit because I worked for a chiropractor for, for about six and a half years. And it's a little electrical stems that they use in therapy. I told Mister. I said, Mister. I said, I've got one of those, so we can put it on your leg, so it, you know it uh, uh, strengthens the muscles, and then it releases, you know, after so many minutes, and then it, you know, constricts again, then lets go, uh, and then we'll put it on his arm. I said, we'll be doing that daily when you get home as well. So I'm just so thankful. I used to have really bad headaches, and my neck would get like freaking knots in them. So I bought the TENS unit off the doctor and, uh, and I, you know, I put them on my neck and there I had four pads, put them on my neck. So it kind of worked that muscle, worked that stuff out of my muscles. But uh, anyway, so I'm glad I've got that. I'll be working that uh, on him as well. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that for people that have uh, gone through things and given me, clues and directing me what I need to do because I'm green as a gourd when it comes to the stroke stuff. Oh, I'll tell you something else. I keep saying, well, hang up, well, hang up, stop it. But I just keep talking. Well, I just got a lot of tech and I ain't talked to y'all since Mutt was a pup. 
but um, the diabetic doctor came and this I did not know. This I did not remember. Mr. and I have been married for five years. We've known each other, you know, all of my, all of our lives. But anyway, um, then we got back together. We got married. We moved up here, and so you know, he was a diabetic. Well, I ain't never been around a diabetic person. I mean, live with him, so I didn't know a whole lot about it. But I figured he knows about it because he's a diabetic. So remember, he's a Martha Stewart, too, so he did all the cooking and stuff, right? Y'all remember that? And um, and then he would, like, get things and say sugar-free this or sugar-free that. So I let him take care of it because, heck, if I know. And uh, anyway, so after this happened, the diabetic doctor came in, and she was talking to him. Sweetest lady, very knowledgeable. Well, she has to be when you be a doctor. But anyway, she was talking to him. And uh, she said, now, you know, Miss Watts, you know, you're going to just eat chicken and fish. And she was going down this list. And uh, I said, well, fish is good. I said, I like fish. I said, some, you know, I'd eat fish all the time. I was like, I like salmon. I said, sometimes, yeah, I mean, I, let me tell you what. I said, sometimes, I said, Mr. Go, I feel like a steak tonight. Do you want to get, because I'm not a steak person. I could eat it, but I'm just not really a big steak person. I feel like you put that thing in your mouth, you go, I just don't get no enjoyment out of it. And I don't like fat. And if it's got a little piece of gristle, as soon as that gristle, he said, I'm spitting it out. I don't care where I'm at. I, oh, I'm going to throw up. I just don't like steak. Wait a minute. So he gets me salmon. So I said, well, that'd be great. I said, because, yeah, Mr., you know, uh, he gets salmon, and he'll, you know, he, he says he wants a steak. I said, now we can both get a salmon. She goes, oh, no. She says, no more steak. She says, Mr. Watts, do you realize how much fat or how much this or whatever it is that's in a steak? And I'm looking. She goes, no. And uh, so anyway, she really educated me a lot. Uh, about di being a diabetic, she said that his cholesterol was great. His cholesterol was better than mine. His blood pressure is better than mine. Yet he had the stroke and the heart attack. And that's why I was trying to say, I don't understand it because everything is, his numbers are way better than mine. Mine are through the roof. And uh, she said uh, it's because of being a diabetic. I did not know that. And I told Mr. after she left the room, I said, I tell you one thing, you're not going to eat. I said, now I'm going to get educated. I left it up to you because I'm not a diabetic and you, you know, you've been dealing with this for a long time. So you know what you can eat, what you have. So I just, you know, I figured you're smart enough, you know, to, to, to know what to eat and what not to eat. Well, evidently, he wasn't that smart, or he just got lazy. So, anyway, she left the room. You know what he said to me? He said, well, I can have a steak every now and then. I looked at him. I said, how are you going to get it? He can't drive. How are you going to get it? I said, I'm going to be doing all the cooking now. And you're going to have to like my cooking. And we're going to eat tons of vegetables. And we're going to eat chicken. And we're going to eat fish. We're going to eat all the good things. See, I've always kind of ate like that. But since I've been married to Martha Stewart, you know, he likes to cook and do all of it. That's why I gained all that weight, 189.6 pounds. So I said, you know, you're going to have to be, excuse me, like I eat. I said, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, I want to keep you around. And so, you are you know, we got to keep your sugar in control. And, you know, we're, we're not going to go through this again, are we, mister? Mm -hmm. That's right. So, I got to look up diabetic foods that I can cook in the crock pot. I was telling them that today. I said, I got to find some foods that I can put in the crock pot and cook. For you and me. So, because listen, 
Remember, I'm gonna have to be helping. I gotta mow the grass, do the weeding, do the bitty 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 bitty. bitty. You know, I gotta be doing all the stuff. Be the cats outside, da 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 da. And so I gotta cut somewhere. So the only way I have to figure out cut 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 because I'm gonna have to be doing all the cooking too. Is put in a crock pot, and that way you can be cooking all day while I'm outside doing my dibby 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 dibbies. And so I think that's a good idea. I just gotta get foods, good recipes. Uh, for diabetic person, I tell him I said I'll eat. You know I'll eat what what you eat. You know I'm not gonna sit over there and eat some bonbons while I'm uh, you know making you eat green beans. So, I mean we're gonna do this together, right, Mister? He goes, okay, okay. He says you're the boss. Hey, I'm trying to be bossy. I just want my Mister around. So I've learned a lot about a stroke. I've learned about a lot about being a diabetic. Well, I've had to get some education real fast, quick, fast, and hurry. You know what I mean? Okay. Where's you, Mr. Thank you. All right. For sure, for sure, for sure, I'm going to get off here. Got to go. I got to take care of Yappy. Plus, I want to put on my pajamas. This is about quarter to ten. It's getting late. I got to get some sleep. And I got to let Yappy out. And uh, I haven't eaten anything for dinner. I really wasn't hungry after all them donuts. But I got to get something a little bit healthy in me. And uh, I'm thirsty. And uh, take care of my Sammy. He's tippy-tapping in there. But remember that I love you. But what? Jesus loves you more. And y'all know what I'm going to say. Let's say it together. You are right. You ready? What? You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the fields. You're blessed when you come and be with me. And you're blessed when you go. In Jesus' name. Until the next video. And we'll bring an update on Mr. And his therapy. And how, how well he's doing. Let's hope that I can do a weekly thing with that as well. To keep y'all abreast as to what's going on. And see what the Lord is doing in his life. Okay guys. Till the next video.